Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. And today I want to try to hook up my Apple IIe keyboard to my Mac computer so that I can actually use the Apple IIe keyboard to type on the Mac. And this is because I want to use the monitor that's on top of the Apple IIe as a second monitor for my Mac, but at the same time, also keep using it as the monitor for my Apple IIe. So to do this, we're going to use the retro connector from Charles Mangan, available on his Option 8 website. So let's get started. So here's the retro connector from Option 8, and it's pretty simple. It's basically a board consisting of a Teensy++ 2.0, along with an adapter that goes from the keyboard inside your Apple IIe, and then just feeds all the lines through the USB. So the way this comes, you just plug your keyboard into this, and then you plug the USB into your Mac, and then you can no longer use the keyboard on your Apple IIe. So what I want to do is actually try and make it so that I can use the Apple IIe keyboard with the IIe or with my Mac. And so what I need to do is actually have a way to attach the cable from the keyboard, say here, into the retro connector, but also be able to connect the retro connector itself back into the Apple IIe board, the motherboard. And so what I'm hoping to do is actually attach another socket here on the back so I can actually plug this into the Apple IIe motherboard. Just basically this will just be like kind of a bridge in between the two. All right, so here's the retro connector after my crazy soldering job. So here's the header on the top and then on the bottom you can see I've kind of glommed on this other female header that's going to go into the Apple IIe motherboard. All right, so it turned out that my idea of trying to mount another socket connector on the back of the shield wasn't a good idea because there actually turned out to be not enough clearance between this and the top of the Apple IIe case, especially once the USB cord was plugged in. So I abandoned that approach. And instead what I've done is I've just modified the Apple IIe keyboard cable to have two output plugs. So here's the input that plugs into the keyboard, comes along, it's going to plug into the retro connector shield here, and then this will plug into the Apple IIe motherboard just like it always did. Second mistake is now that I've got the cable here with the extra header connector on it here, uh, as soon as I plugged the retro connector into the Apple IIe and then plugged the USB cable into my Mac, uh, all the lights on my peripheral cards in my 2E came on because my Mac was then trying to supply 5 volts to the entire Apple IIe, not just the keyboard, uh, because it was going through the retro connector. So that was a problem because then the USB port on my Mac can't handle that much power, and I don't think it's a good idea to be powering the Apple IIe through that USB anyway. So instead, what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing that I do with my Raspberry Pi, which is to use the Apple IIe to provide power to the retro connector keyboard shield. So to do this, I just took my USB cable and I cut the red wire, which is the plus 5 volts. And so now I have to have the Apple IIe computer on in order to use the keyboard shield with my Mac. The other ways that I was trying were I was trying to mount either the retro connector directly onto the motherboard of the 2E or to try to run a extra connector like you can see here this dead connector on the cable. Uh, they never worked because I would always get interference from one board or the other. So even though I would never have them both on at the same time, I would get crosstalk between the two boards. So the Apple IIe motherboard would mess up the retro connector and just send spurious characters to my Mac, or vice versa. Uh, 
The only solution that I could come up with that actually worked in all cases was just to run two separate cables. So here you can see I've got the one cable coming from the keyboard connector on the Apple IIe keyboard and then I have the other cable coming from the actual connector on the motherboard and they both run out the back of the Apple IIe and I've just added on a 26 pin socket here and so what I do is if I want to hook up the retro connector to my Mac I unplug it from the Apple IIe plug the cable from the keyboard into the retro connector and then I'm good to go and I should say that this is actually nothing against the retro connector I'm trying to do something that actually isn't part of the usual spec for the retro connector usually you have a dead Apple IIe or Apple IIc and you're just trying to hook up the keyboard to your modern computer here I'm trying to use both computers and be able to just switch the keyboard in and out between the Apple IIe and my modern computer uh, so this is a little bit out of the ordinary and once I've got it all hooked up it actually works really well so let's go ahead and we'll fire it up and attach it to my Mac and see how the keyboard works all right so now I have disconnected my Apple IIe motherboard from the keyboard connector and I've plugged the keyboard connector into the retro connector and this is now attached to my Mac. Alright, so here is the retro connector hooked up to my Mac and on the left hand side you can see here's my regular MacBook Pro. Right hand side I've got my terminal window on the second monitor here but I can go ahead and I can actually use the Apple IIe keyboard to do things in the terminal. So for example I could go into this directory here and I could do a VI on the code say for the 2E keyboard and go ahead and do all of my editing here in the VI window. So it's kind of nice because now I've got the second monitor and it looks like I'm actually controlling it with the Apple IIe keyboard instead of having to switch back to my MacBook Pro keyboard. It gets even cooler if you try things like Virtual 2, which is the Apple II emulator. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to turn on display mirroring because Virtual 2, when you go full screen mode, it doesn't actually like to put the full screen on the second monitor for some reason. Uh, but if we're over here and we switch to full screen by hitting Command Enter, then you can see it looks like we have just a regular old Apple IIe that we're using here on the right hand side and we can go ahead and boot up say a disk and do stuff and it just looks like we're running a regular 2e overall the project was a success it turned out to be a much bigger project than i had anticipated and there was a lot of failures along the way but i thought i would go ahead and just include those just to show that things don't always go so smoothly but i'm happy with the results in the end and now I can actually go ahead and I can use my Apple IIe keyboard as just a regular terminal and type on it. But then at the same time, if I want to, I can actually disconnect the retro connector from the Apple IIe keyboard and reconnect the Apple IIe keyboard to the actual Apple II so I can just use it as a regular Apple II. Uh, so I'm not sure if I would recommend this sort of hack. Uh, just in general because it was kind of a pain and it wasn't great but uh, overall uh, if you have an old Apple IIe keyboard lying around this is a perfect modification to get the retro connector and hook it up otherwise yeah I guess that's it for this episode and I'll see you next time thanks for watching